everybody. So today is Friday and that means, nope, not time for Friday Five. This is time for Friday Favorites, new show I'm starting on my channel that I'm going to try to do every week where I sometimes will do Friday Five and that'll be really fun. Uh, but I'm going to talk about whatever I want and talk about my, my favorites of movies and books and food and comic books and whatever I think is fun. The reason why I had to do this, unfortunately, is that I got attacked uh, by uh, the stu the music studios for my Friday, Friday Five videos. I had close to like 100 claims in a matter of weeks. It was exhausting. It was frustrating. It was discouraging. And so I just needed to take a little bit of a break. And, uh, and so, you know, when I feel kind of up to, you know, trying to fight that music, uh, monster again, then I'll, I'll post some Friday fives, but, uh, for now, I'm going to just talk about whatever I want to talk about on Fridays. It's going to be really fun. So today I thought it would be really cool to share with you guys what I've been reading in 2018 and uh, what things have been good, what things have been bad, and uh, let, and give you my thoughts. A lot of what I've ended up reading has been to do with the podcast or for book club. Pretty much everything <laughs> that I've read has been a uh, has been involved with that somewhere or another. Uh, so it's a good thing I have book club because it kind of keeps me, <laughs> keeps me reading, uh, other books. Uh, and, um, so, you know, I, I just, I have the homeworks podcast. I'll put a link down if you guys want to check that out. Uh, and so I try to read the books that the movies are based off of if I can. And, uh, it's really fun. So I have read 29 books this year, which is less than I read last year, but I've just had last time to share <laughs> to read and I did get a lot of my reading through audible.com I'll put a link if you want to check out audible.com it's an amazing uh, site that I've been a member of for over 10 years so I I love audible.com and I love to listen to audiobooks as I'm working it's just one of my favorite ways to read so uh, let's get started. I, my goal for the year was 24 books or it was two books a month and I've got 29. So yay for me. Uh, so, all right. First book I read of this year was, uh, four book club is how to train your dragon. Uh, this of course, the movies were very loosely based on, uh, this is by Cressida Cowell. And I, it was fine for kids so that the movie was such a loose adaptation. And so that kind of threw me off a little bit. Uh, and I get that's kind of unfair and I should appreciate just his own thing, but a particularly toothless talking was very jarring for me in the book. So there you go. That was my thoughts on that. I would give it, I gave it three out of five stars. And I read Wrinkle in Time to get ready for the movie. And I love Wrinkle in Time. I think the characters are so well written and I'm so invested in their journey, uh, particularly Meg's journey to coming to understand the value of human life and her family and Charles Wallace and her being able to decide by the end to confront it and the evil that is trying to take her family away. I think it's really beautiful and very moving. I would give Wrinkle in Time five stars. It's, it's really great, I think. Then I read two Black Panther comics. If you're ready for the Black Panther podcast I did with How to, How to Love Comics, I read Black Panther 1. Uh, this was by Tanishi Coates and Brian Stelfreeze. And, uh, and then I also read uh, the Black Panther World of Wakanda series by Roxane Gay. Both really interesting, really well done, really interesting characters. And I would give both of these four stars. Then next, I read A Man Called Ove. This book I loved. I love Friedrich Bachman's writing. I think that he has such humanity in his characters. Uh, I think this is a character that, you know, is kind of even seen a lot, the sort of curmudgeon. Uh, it's, it's kind of similar to what you see in like As Good As It Gets or a movie like that. 
but I felt like you got to know his backstory so much and there was such humanity in, in him and all of the characters that I really loved this book. I also really loved last year, uh, his book, uh, the uh, my grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry i loved that book as well and i don't know it was just uh i thought it was a lovely sweet book and uh and it's just about community and life and i loved the flashbacks to his marriage and it felt like something that was real and that could actually happen so i give it five stars i loved man called obey then i read once upon a prince this is by Rachel Hawk. This was a, a, a Hallmark movie. And I really actually enjoyed it. It was very sweet. It's a Cinderella story. Uh, the faith-based elements didn't work as well for me. They were a little awkward, I thought, inserted in the uh, book. But overall, it's a fun little read uh, if you like Cinderella stories. So I gave this three stars out of five read royal matchmaker by Re reagan phillips to get ready for the movie and then actually i don't know if it was actually what the movie was based on uh they because they were quite different but this was sweet and fun little you know romance and i give it three stars and i read hope's gift and this was this by tara kelly and she's somebody who supports our podcast on social media quite a bit and so i wanted to support her read her book and uh, I thought it was a fun little romance, <laughs> a cute little romance, uh, and I gave it three stars. Okay, then another one I read was The Sweetest Heart. This was by Katherine Lanigan, and I actually really enjoyed the movie a lot. Uh, this is a Harlequin book, so they obviously have to tone it down in the uh, Hallmark version, uh, but I actually thought this was really bad. I, I really didn't like it. I thought that the, the writing and the dialogue was very bad, um, so I gave it one and a half stars. Then I read The Beach House by Mary Alice Monroe. And it's about this woman who's coming home for, uh, after being gone, her, find out her mother has cancer. Uh, she's, she's been away in the city because uh, she kind of left on a bad note, this, this beach community. And uh, about how she kind of comes to understand herself as she get, repairs her relationships with her family and her mother. And I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really... Uh, touching uh, read. I liked the movie as well. So if you hated the movie, then you probably wouldn't like the book, but I give it three and a half stars. Next, I have Finnegan of the Rock. This is by Melina, Melina Marchetta. And this is just not my kind of book. Uh, it just, I read it for book club and I thought it was really boring. <laughs> I don't even remember really uh, and much about it now, but I thought it was so slow and I just didn't get into the characters. Uh, so I gave it two, I gave it one and a half stars. Then I, uh, then I read Geekerella by Ashley Poston. I loved this book. It was very clever. They take all, uh, I love Cinderella. Everyone knows that. And they took all of the kind of tropes of Cinderella and they put it in a modern day setting uh, with Comic-Con being the big ball. And the, the prince is one of the stars of, of a, like a sci-fi kind of series. And I thought that was really fun and really cute. And the, the, the pumpkin uh, carriage is a food truck. It was very good. I really enjoyed it. I give it four and a half stars. Next, I read The Hate You Give uh, by Angie Thomas. This was also for book club. And I really enjoyed it. I thought that it was very moving, especially anything that had to do with her and her family was really good. I did not think the stuff at school was as compelling or nuanced or interesting for me. Uh, and so I that dragged it down. Uh, so I gave it three and a half stars. Then uh, I read The Incredibles 2, uh, <laughs> the junior novelization before uh, the movie came out. And uh, I, it's 
basically the movie so i really enjoyed it <laughs> and i give it three stars then for book club this was my suggestion i read uh the undomestic goddess by sophie kinsella this is a really escapist book to me i think it's really funny it's about this woman who's this overworked lawyer who makes this mistake and so getting in this job as this housekeeper for this really fancy uh home in uh in I don't know, the countryside of England. And it, it's a ridiculous premise, but I thought the whole idea of like uh, the way that we have kind of become the, I, the whole theme, I think what Sophie Kinsella does so well is she takes these themes like here, workaholism and the sort of the way we've devalued domestic skills in our society. I think she takes that theme and then puts it in kind of a funny rom-com that is something that I really enjoy. I think her writing is pretty sharp and I just think it's funny and I really, really enjoy this book. It's definitely an escapist book for me. And so I give it four and a half stars. Next, I read Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan, and I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was really funny. I think it's very similar to the movie, except uh, all of the stuff with her mom is much more fleshed out and, uh, and more time spent on that, and also much more time spent on her cousin that has the, the infidelity issue. Uh, and But, I mean, his cousin. Uh, and but i was fine with all those changes it worked for me in the movie uh but i still really enjoyed the book as well and i'm really excited to read the sequels when i have time whenever that will be uh so i give crazy rich asians four stars then i i read love on the lido deck uh this was uh they made the movie love at sea based on this book this was by barbara oliverio oliverio and this one wasn't for me i actually think they improved it a lot in the movie it's not like the greatest movie ever but this book uh was just it was just boring for me it i just didn't get attached it wasn't funny enough it wasn't romantic enough uh, so I gave it one and a half stars. Then I read, uh, there's going to be a whole bunch of Christmas romance books that I read. I read A Shoe Addict's Christmas. This is coming up uh, in Candice Cameron Ray uh, movie for Hallmark. And I really liked this book. It was really funny. And it kind of has this um, Christmas Carol kind of take to it uh, where there's this guardian angel who comes and she sort of tries on these shoes, which takes her to realize different parts of her life and, and how she should be a nicer person, a better person, appreciate Christmas more. It was really fun. I really enjoyed it. I give it three and a half stars. Next, I read My Abandonment by Peter Rock. This is the book that Leave No Trace is based on, which is the movie that I loved. I think the book is solid. It's basically the same story uh, as Leave No Trace, uh, except for I think the girl in Leave No Trace is a little bit older. In this case, she's only 13. And I think she's 15 or 16 in Leave No Trace. But other than that, it was really good. Some people might think it was a little boring, but this is written for young adults. So I thought pacing was fine. Uh, so I give it three and a half stars. Next is To All the Boys I've Loved Before, and this is by Jenny Han. This movie was kind of a phenomenon, uh, and uh, the book is very popular. I thought that they were both fine. I liked Largeen as a character. I think the whole conceit of how the letters get sent out in the book makes way more sense and is way better uh and uh, there are a couple other things that i didn't love about the movie it's fine i think it's perfectly fine but i definitely don't think it's one of the great high school comedies of all time like that's crazy talk to me but this was cute enough i give it three stars Next, I read The Nine Lives of Christmas. This is one of the most popular Hallmark movies uh, has, was made that was based on this book. It's by Sheila Roberts. And uh, the, the book is narrated by the cats, so, which is kind of fun and novel. Uh, and it's about this uh, girl who falls in love with this firefighter and, and has this cute dynamic. Uh, the thing about the book that I didn't like quite as much is uh, the, uh, the lead girl... Uh, she merely she is kind of too ditzy in this book compared to the way it is in the movie so that was sort of disappointing uh, but overall it's harmless I give it two and a half stars 
Next is the Godwink effect. And this is kind of like chicken soup for the soul, sort of. It's just like these little short stories about little miracles. Really cute. This is by Squire Rushnell. And uh, so, yeah, if you want like a little inspirational book with a little inspirational stories, it's fun. And so I'd give it three stars. Next, as The Christmas Company, we read this because we actually interviewed the author on our podcast. This is by Elise Murray. And she it was really, really cool. And this is a really fun book. It's about this, uh, this town that hosts this like immersive Christmas Carol experience every year. Well, all of a sudden the funding's going to be cut. And so the guy who is cutting the funding comes down and the girl who's sort of kind of borderline obsessed with this festival, she of course makes it her mission to like cure this real life Scrooge. And so it was a little meta in that way. And it was just fun and romantic. And I thought she did a good job creating atmosphere and tone. And so I give it four stars. Next is Hope at Christmas by Nancy Nagel. This is coming up uh, as a Hallmark movie this season. I think it's called uh, Time for Christmas, I think. Anyway, no, uh, it's called Hope at Christmas. This, uh, this movie uh, is coming up with Ryan Pavey. And this book uh, is cute enough. It's just about this divorced woman who meets this man at this bookstore. And uh, they you know, she, her, her and her daughter are really struggling after this divorce. And it's, it's uh, about her and him, you know, falling in love, getting to know each other and whatever. So I give it three stars. Next, I have The Trouble with Christmas and by Debbie Mason. And this is being turned into a Hallmark movie called Welcome to Christmas, I believe, with Eric Mabius. It started really strong. It was very funny. And I thought the lead character had like sass to her and she had personality. Like as soon as she fell in love, uh, it became very boring and very lame and just kind of lost all its, its heart to it. It's clever because instead of the normal take of the town that doesn't want the corporate company to come in this is a case where they're like actively courting the company and she's the one that has to deliver the bad news that their town isn't a good fit for the company for the investment so that's sort of different but overall i give it two stars next i have ralph breaks the internet the junior uh, novelization so i read this because people online were freaking out you know, like oh it's the worst ending whatever it's the worst uh, the you know, sequel that they could possibly have now uh, the junior novelizations aren't like the most accurate thing that you've ever seen but they're usually pretty close in the neighborhood of being close uh for the ones that i have read and i have to say i think people were way overreacting but then i'm not as attached to the original as other people i thought it was perfectly fine and perfectly cute and I think the people are going to enjoy it. Uh, so yeah, it, it didn't blow my mind with the story, uh, but I thought it was sweet. And uh, so uh, I, I think that people were way overacting. There was nothing in there that was like, oh my gosh, this is the worst thing ever. So I gave it three stars. Next uh, is Time for Me to Come Home. And this is being turned into a Hallmark movie called Time for Me to Come Home for Christmas, which is a terrible name, but it's based on this Blake Shelton song, Time for Me to Come Home. And it's written by his mother, Dorothy Shackelford. And this was actually pretty charming. I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. Basically, this road trip book about this country music star who's kind of like uh cynical and over it and everything like that and then this girl this woman who it doesn't like care at all that he's famous she's kind of a little bit judgy and a little bit critical of him and they end up they end first they're on like a plane and then they end up on a train and then they're on a car and anyway and of course the longer that they are together the more that they fall in love and i thought that it, i mean it's not that long of a book first of all which some of these can be a little too long but I thought the dialogue was actually pretty decent and it was pretty charming and I enjoyed it. So I give it four stars. Next was Pride and Prejudice and Mistletoe. This is by Melissa De La Cruz. This is the big Lisa Chabert movie that's coming uh, in November. 
And I'm a, I must say, I didn't enjoy this book. Uh, they have Darcy as the female character that's the lead of the story. And I really didn't think that worked because uh, the, I think it works better for Pride and Prejudice to have the Lizzie character be in the, the lead protagonist because she's the one that kind of makes more mistakes, really, than like Darcy just says a couple kind of prideful things and is a little bit, but like, but Lizzie makes like big mistakes that she has to like deal with. And she's the one that I think has to make more change of her character through the course of the story. And so to have her be the, to have the Lizzie character be just the love interest, I don't think really works because you have this character named Luke who was just kind of a perfect person. He was kind of perfect character. And you had this Darcy character who was just sort of the standard uh, leaving the city, a uh, workaholic character. And so there was really no like romantic tension because it was obvious that she was going to end up with Luke. And I don't know. I just didn't like it. I didn't think it worked really at all. Uh, so I gave it one and a half stars. Finally, the most recent book that I have read is called The Second Sister by Marie Bostwick. And this is being turned into the Hallmark Hall of Fame movie called Christmas Everlasting. I have Dennis Habert playing a role in the movie, but for some reason they changed her from working on a political campaign, which they did in the book to working on a, a law firm. And why would you do that when you have Dennis Haybert, who could play president, the president, he's already been the president on 24. He played President Palmer. That would be amazing. You could have him play the president like, and have her work for that campaign. And I like her working for a campaign better than her working for a law firm because I think that it just makes more sense like why she would you know leave home and not be connected with home as much because she's so invested in making this person she really believes in president and he actually becomes president and so it's like i don't know i thought it was good uh, but she finds out that her uh, sister has passed away through a tragedy. She has to go home. Her sister was kind of special needs, uh, but it was very sweet. And so she has to deal with the loss of her sister and also coming back home. She hasn't been home for a long time, similar to the beach house. But um, I, I think, uh, I think both books were solid actually. Uh, so we'll see how the movie ends up being, uh, but I'm going to give it three and a half stars. So there you go. That's all of the books that I have read in 2018. Know what you think about these books and uh, where where you lie in them, and uh, if you what have you been reading? What do you recommend? What's your favorite book that you've read in 2018? Of all of these books, my favorite book that I've read in 2018 is probably A Man Called Ove. I loved that book. Uh, and I really do have a soft spot in my heart for The Undomestic Goddess, even though I know it's kind of a silly book, but I really enjoyed it. You know what your favorites are. And uh, thanks so much. And let me know what you'd like for me to talk about in future uh, Friday favorites. So I'll talk to you all later. Bye.